But there's yet another punter who needs their help, so there's no time to mope. Hi, men and white. I'm Ian. I'm 27 years old and I'm from Edinburgh. I'm a history student. I'm also a double amputee. I wear two prosthetic legs, which I've had since July 2005. I'm basically a normal guy and I'm a fanatical hip supporter, season ticket holder. Well, I say he's not a normal bloke at all then. <laughs> we can't help him with that. The prosthetic leg that I have is good functionally and does everything that it's supposed to do. However, I would like you to make it a bit more interesting for me and try and make it as unique as me. Do you think you can help? I can we just put loads of gadgets in there, totally pimp it out. A Swiss Army pen leg. He will be like the uh, slightly more real version of Inspector Gadget. So what do you say? Are we going to do this? Yeah, I reckon. Jim, are we going to pimp his prosthetic? Go, go, gadget leg. So, with the plea accepted, it's over to our Doc Frankensteins to bring Ian's new leg to life. MP3 player. Simply, it would be like a, a gearbox, uh, a little pinion on the end of there with a little rack that runs past it. Light emitting diodes. You can get very bright LEDs, can't you? If you cut that out of aluminium, roll it into a cone, and then he's got a nice kind of like conic section to store it all in. I think we're on to something here. After all the sketching, what actually is the plan? Well, they're going to turn Ian into the bionic man by loading his leg full of music, speakers, lights and phone technology. Then, they're going to build a funky metal prosthetic casing to put it all inside. Nice. Happy to get legless for the sake of science, Ian's turned up to surrender his metal limb. What's it actually made of? Titanium and plastic, basically. Oh, you're lucky I can't weld to either of those. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we're going to need it off. They're really nicely made. Okay. You better look after it. We will, I promise you. As a fine piece of engineering that we are going to make better. We've got a little bit of a time constraint on this job. In fact, a big time constraint. Because Ian can't spend long without his leg, and we need his leg here to make sure everything fits with it, uh, we've only got today. He goes off sightseeing, and we've got one day to build a high-tech prosthetic leg. So it's full steam ahead for the men in white as they try to get the pimped prosthetic ready in time. <laughs> what are you doing? What I've got here, an MP3 player. What I'm going to do mm. is take apart this pedometer and instead of pressing play every time I want to make a stepping sound, this is going to trigger the play button to do it for me. They will write about this moment in the, the annals of science history when Basil attached an MP3 player via a remote control to a pedometer. Jem has taken on the task of making the metal false leg, using aluminium sheeting and steel inserts to hold all the technology inside. I, meanwhile, am sewing up Ian's trouser legs. The idea being a strip of Velcro here so that he can very easily rip open his trousers to reveal the tap that Jem and Basil have attached to his prosthetic leg. I don't feel as though I'm really stretched to my full potential with this task. I discovered a gene once. Oh, it. Guess that's the trousers finished then. Meanwhile, for the front of the false leg, Baz is attempting to turn some simple cycle lamps into super bright headlights. Well, electronics, especially analog electronics, is a bit of a black art. You never really know what's going to happen until you try it. Right, all I've got there is a switch that turns the whole thing off. Brilliant. Whoops. That's not so cool. Yeah, I help build robots. <laughs> and I'm beaten by a cycle lamp. To form a human leg has taken millions of years of evolution. The men in white have only had six hours, so they're not doing badly. But time is quickly running out. As night falls, the mad scientists plan to bring a metal leg to life. It's time to start piecing together the mechanical man. This stuff uh, used to be known as death glue because uh, the solvent in it 
made you want to commit suicide. I didn't know that when I first worked with it. I was probably lucky to survive. OK, you are going nowhere. Oh, what's the word? No, 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 don't. <laughs> now your skin's permanently ruined by, uh, <laughs> by methyl acrylate, if I'm not mistaken. Where's the MP3 player? <laughs> oh, it's in there. <laughs> oh. Can it come out easily? Um, depends what your definition of easily is. All right, can we get this in easily? Come on, yeah, Jeff. You know. Oh, yes, I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. I think I'm docked. Creating cutting-edge technology is all about care, precision, and, above all, sensitivity. There's loads of expensive electronics in there, Buzz. And there's one tiny screw. <laughs> We're going to have to take it all apart and start from the beginning. Where is it now? Listen, listen. It's in there somewhere. He's going to have this amazing leg with a tiny rattle in it. It's totally disappeared. It's a magic leg. Wow! <laughs> We've made something better than I first thought. <laughs> Let's put something else in it, if it disappears. <laughs> An amazing teleporting leg. Basil, no. Stop Basil, no. Let's it that way. Yes. Hey. <laughs> then, after ten hours' toil, and using all their scientific powers, finally the Men in White's creation is born. Check that out. Can you see it there? Whoa. <laughs> is that bionic <laughs> or what? Uh, that's awesome. We've got a switch there for your lights. So you find it's your way home from the pub. flashing modes. Your switch over this side is to turn your speakers on. These black things here are mini speakers, which this MP3 player runs through which makes sound effects every time you step. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> and last but not least, Jem, take it away. OK, let's see what I can do here. It's just, just waiting to connect. You may feel something in a minute. Oh, I think you've got a call coming in. <laughs> there is no way you won't look the coolest person in the whole of Edinburgh. Seriously, though, what's your favourite bit of it all? Velcro trousers. Everything you've done is fantastic, but I like the whites. It's the Velcro yes! trousers! Yes! At least I know nobody will want to borrow it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know what? If someone does try and borrow it, or try and steal it for that matter, there's a little safety thing. See? I'm going to nick his leg, quick. <laughs> 